The recent earthquake in Afghanistan of 7.5 magnitude was a huge one which centered 213 km below the earth's surface. It happened just a few months after the big one in Nepal which caused a lot of devastation and huge loss of life. Scientists are working tirelessly to figure out how to predict them as any advance warning even of a few minutes can save a lot of lives. But success has eluded them. However, years of research has given us a lot of insight into the science of earthquakes. And in this series, we will try to go deeper into the science of earthquakes. These frequent ones, especially in the pristine Himalayan range, makes one wonder what is it that causes earthquakes? Are they an act of God? For this, we will have to briefly look at the history of earth creation. Long time back, lots of material fused together to form the earth. This fusion generated a lot of heat. And slowly, as the earth cooled down, denser material sank towards the center and lighter material rose to the top. So now we can divide the earth in four parts. Very thin crust at the top, mantle just below, outer core and hard inner core. The inner core is solid, however, the mantle is liquid and can flow. Due to large temperature difference between the crust and the core, convection currents develop in the mantle and its material flows from each side to outside, similar to convection currents that we see while heating water. The moving mantle causes the crust sitting on top of it to move or slide. Earth crust slides in big pieces and these huge pieces of the crust that slide are called tectonic plates. There are seven tectonic plates on Earth. These plates constitute the whole of Earth crust. But they slide in different directions at different speeds against or along each other. The lines where these plates meet is called a fault. On an average, these plates move a few centimeters a year. It is this extremely slow differential movement of plates that causes the earthquakes. Let's see how. Consider a rubber band. Now you can keep stretching the rubber band till it hits a limit and snaps. At this time, all the energy stored in the rubber band releases. We have all done this when we have tried to hit our friends with our slings. Now the earth's tectonic plates are made of elastic and brittle rocky material which also keeps sliding very very slowly against each other and storing energy just like a rubber band. And when the plates cannot slide anymore, they snap back. This sudden slip at the fault releases the stored elastic energy and causes earthquake and the energy released is enormous. For example, 2001 Bhuj earthquake in India released energy equivalent to 400 times Hiroshima's nuclear bomb. This release energy is spread by seismic waves which travel along the earth's surface. These waves cause the ground to shake violently and cause huge devastation far and wide. Once the energy is released and the earthquake is over, the movement of the plates and the process of energy storing at the fault starts again, almost like waiting to snap and cause the next one. Most of the earthquakes happen at the fault line or places where the plates meet. However, some earthquakes also happen away from the fault lines, like the 1993 Latur earthquake in India. At these places, the plates break causing rise to new fault lines. So we saw that this devastating natural process is due to convective currents in molten earth, which causes earth crust to slide and snap almost like a rubber band, thereby releasing the stored elastic energy and causing huge devastation. In the next video, we shall dig deeper to see how the ground shakes during the earthquakes. Thank you.